What is up, my legends? Today, we're going to be talking about some news that recently came out about iTunes and streaming. This news kind of changes the way people will be able to stream music. And as a mastering engineer, I'm super excited to for this to happen. And that's why I wanted to share it with you. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Apple Digital Masters document, this one here. And I'm going to be discussing one key point that is bloody awesome. And that key point is lossless distribution. Oh yeah. What is lossless distribution? You might be asking. Well, let me tell you. Apple Music can now deliver lossless encodings to customers using the Apple lossless audio codec. Woo, that's sick. So if you didn't know before, when you uploaded your music to iTunes, they get converted to AAC, which is a lossy format. Still sounds really good, don't get me wrong. But now Apple are giving the subscribers a option to listen to lossless audio. So that means the same high resolution audio that you're listening to in the studio, they can be streamed directly by the consumer. That is complete, that is massive news. Like I feel like not many people are talking about this at the moment and I just needed to tell people that this is a thing now. So let's go through some of the delivery requirements and what this actually means for you. So best practices for Apple Digital Masters. Our latest high resolution encoding process ensures that your music is transparently and faithfully distributed in the way that you intend it to be heard. However, before you submit songs to Apple for encoding, there are some best practices you can follow to ensure that your audio is optimized for Apple Music or iTunes Store use high resolution sources. To take best advantage of our latest encoders, use only 24-bit sources and send us the highest resolution master file possible, appropriate to the medium and the project. Don't upsample files to a higher resolution than their original format just because it won't add any information. That makes sense. So, if you record your music at 24-bit 48K, you can upload it at 24-bit 48K and that's what they recommend to do. At the Mastering Studio for streaming services, we actually deliver 24-bit 96K, just because when we run it through the analog gear, we're able to record at a higher sample rate and therefore just giving us a better resolution. So 24-bit and the highest resolution possible, that's what you need to do. Now, I know some of you might be saying priming your little dislike fingers. Some engineers prefer to control the sample rate process by sending already converted files. So you'll hear a lot of people out there saying, just upload 16-bit 44.1. A lot of people out there say that actually. However, we ask that you deliver the highest native sample rate available. As technology advances and bandwidth, storage, battery life and processor power increases, Keeping the highest resolution masters available in our systems allows for full advantage of future improvements. This is the future improvement. People can now stream these original files that you're uploading and therefore you want to upload the highest resolution possible. For people that want to listen to high quality audio, they'd much prefer to listen to a 24-bit 96K file than a 16 44.1. Any audio file that wants to listen to high-res audio would want to listen to the highest resolution possible. So I think that's like such good news that people can now listen to high-resolution audio. And actually a key point that I want to mention on this while I'm talking about it is I was listening to the mastering show with Ian Shepard. Really good podcast, by the way. Go check them out if you haven't checked them out already. It's just the mastering show. And they were talking about that Bluetooth doesn't accept those higher sample rates or it doesn't work with those higher sample rates. So like Apple earpods and that kind of thing, if they're Bluetooth, won't be able to play the highest resolution audio. But I think that's more of a Bluetooth issue that will be resolved in the near future rather than an actual iTunes issue that needs to be resolved. I think as technology increases, you should just be uploading the highest resolution possible to make sure the highest quality music is out there for future improvements like these. And I have no doubt that Bluetooth will be able to transfer higher resolution audio in the near future. Another point I want to add is some of these aggregators don't accept high resolution audio files. So my answer to that is use an aggregator that accepts high resolution audio files. I think lots of the aggregators will be trying to make sure they do accept high resolution audio. But at the time of this video, DistroKid accepts high resolution audio and that's why I recommend using them. 
They have accepted it for a while actually. So yeah, that'll allow you to get your 24-bit 96K files onto all the platforms. I'm getting excited over just file types and streaming, but I can't be the only one that thinks this is awesome. Like now I can listen to other high resolution audio. Whew. Exciting times, the future is here. It's kind of a shame that lots of people were uploading 16-bit 44.1 to streaming services just because now that's what people will be listening to when they use this lossless audio. But from now on, deliver highest resolution possible, 24-bit, and that way audio nerds like me can listen to the best quality possible. Thanks for watching the video. If you learned anything, consider giving the video a like because it helps my channel. If you want to keep up to date with my content, which is audio related content, recording, mixing and mastering tutorials, consider subscribing and press the bell if you want to be notified. But otherwise, thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And remember, <coughs> use your ears.